zero. Research explorer in time and space. uncharted region of the planet called Earth stands the laboratory of Captain Zero. In this secret location, known only to a few in the outside world, Captain Zero and his associates experiment in time and space to learn from the past, to plan for the future. has been established. We now transmit you direct to the laboratory of Captain Zero. Please stand by. Captain? You've got me, Jet. Assume the focus 180 degrees. Let's see if we can find out where he's looking at. Yes, sir. There. Get a close-up. Captain, looks like a young boy. I bet he's only about eight or nine years old. One of the Delawares are hugging around here. Now I can practice tracking a real Indian. in the woods. Thou art as fleet as a deer when thou art off to the woods, but thou dost amble along like a cow when tis time to come home. But I found some Indian signs, Mother, and I was tracking them. And what wouldst thou do if thou did catch up with him? I'd capture him with my javelin. Thou mayest stun rabbit and turkeys with thy knob-headed javelin, but not Indians. Chipmunk. I want to hunt deer and bear. When thou art older and wiser, Daniel. Yes, sir. But why do I have to come in so early? I have thy lessons to do. The sun will be setting soon, and thou knowest there may be strange Indians prowling about. Put up thy things. Yes, sir. No Indians. Besides, the Indians around here are all friendly. I haven't met one yet that wasn't. Thou art forgetting about the mountain Indians. Thou knowest that sometimes they come scouting through here to see what we settlers are up to. I've never seen any. Not many who see them live to tell about it. Wash thy hands and face. Yes, ma'am. But I'll sure be glad when I'm old enough to have a gun. Who are they, Captain? I'm not certain, Jet, but I've got a pretty good idea. What's the setting on the time machine? Pennsylvania, 
in the year 1743. That checks. What's the exact longitude and latitude? Longitude 75 degrees, 45 minutes, 50 seconds north. Latitude 40 degrees, 15 minutes, 10 seconds west. Uh-huh. Get the map of Pennsylvania on the microfilm. Pennsylvania. Well, that location is on the outskirts of the little settlement of Redding. Just as I thought. That boy we've been watching is young Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone? Right. And in the year 1743, he was just nine years old. Apparently, he's already a pretty good hunter with that knob-headed javelin of his. But what about that Indian we saw? He didn't look very friendly to me. What do you suppose he's up to? I don't know, Jet. Maybe we better stay on the view screen and find out. He's not there now. Refocus back to the cabin. We'll see what develops. How am I ever going to be a great hunter and explorer? If I have to come in the house every time the sun goes down. If thou wouldst spend as much time on thy lessons as thou dost in the woods, maybe thou could become a reader in the Quaker church. But, Mother, I don't want to be a reader. I want to hunt, trap, explore, and, and maybe even cross the mountains to the west. Darling, thou art a little boy yet. Thou hast thy whole life to be a hunter. But I wanted to get started. Right now, thou best get started on thy lesson. Thy father and brothers will be home soon. But mother, may I not practice tracking in the woods a little while longer? I won't go too far. But I have the lessons coming first, Daniel. Lessons. What does a hunter and explorer need with reading, writing, arithmetic? I'm already learning the lessons I'm going to need. Right now, I can throw a tomahawk and ride a horse burback. My father is showing me how to forge tools in a blacksmith shop. Now, even know how to repair a gun. Bill. Daniel? Yes, ma'am? I am going out to milk the cows. But when I return, I shall want to hear thee spell. But milking a cow is my chore, mother. Spell beaver for me, Daniel? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, B, um, B B E V E R? No. Uh, B E E V E R? Thou will tend to thy lessons, and I will tend to the milking. B E A V E R. Well, at least I can trap a beaver, even if I can't spell it. Someday I'll have a million acres of land just for trapping, hunting, and fishing. I'll be right in the forest. Down. Daniel? Yes, I'm on studying. One of the cows has gone into the woods. Old Clara, I will leave thy lessons and go and fetch her back. Yes, sir. I'd better take my javelin just in case. Now, do not go too far, Daniel. If old Clara is lost, I do not want thee lost, too. Yes, sir. Made so many tracks around here. I don't know which is which. Stop. No run. No afraid. Me Delaware. Me friend. But 
But why do you have your knife out? Me medicine man. Me get plants, dig roots, get bark, make medicine for tribe. Look, stop, dig. All time, look, stop, dig. There, plant for medicine. Yeah, that yellow root for sore eyes. You know? Sure, my mother boils the roots and uses the yellow water. Me do like same. Glory, I thought you were a mountain in there. No, me Delaware, tell by beads. Me friend, white man. I'm sure glad. Small boy in deep woods, bad, get lost. Maybe bad Indian in deep wood. I think I am lost. I was looking for one of our cows and well. Cow find other way home, cow smart. You know how find north? Well, I could if I could see the sun or the north star. Maybe no sun, no star. Come. You come this way. There you turn stone. Here mark in dirt. There footprint. Many signs. You make big trail. Yeah, I'm beginning to see it now. Bad Indian find you easy. Must learn leave no signs. Break trail. Swing on vine. When cross stream, walk in water. When near camp, cover trail. Leaves. You learn or no live long in bad Indian country. I can find my way home now. I sometimes hunt rabbits and squirrels around here. You got gun? No, I get them with my javelin. You hit rabbit with this? Sure, turkeys and chipmunks too. You make good hunter. I'm gonna be the greatest hunter and explorer and trapper in the whole world. And someday I'm even gonna cross the mountains and explore the other side. Do you wanna come with me? Me happy here. Many bad Indians across mountains. Well, thank you very much. You good boy. You meet here tomorrow. Me show how track, how cover trail, how hide, how live in forest. Honest? Me go now. Tomorrow then, goodbye. Man, I sure wouldn't want to live in the forest with Indians around. Well, the Delawares are pretty friendly, Jeff. In fact, it was through them that young Boone learned how to live in the woods, like an Indian, and how to think like an Indian, so that when he later moved into the wilderness of Kentucky, he was well able to live off the forest and protect himself and his friends against Indians who weren't quite so friendly. Captain, before you shut down the time machine, do you suppose we could pick up Daniel Boone in Kentucky after he grew up? Well, I don't know. We can try. I think I saw something in here that should be able to give us an exact word. Here it is. Okay, reset the time machine for the year 1770, June the 11th, about 5 p.m. Yes, sir. I'll set the location. All set, sir. Good, and stand by to move ahead. Ready, Jeff? Ready, sir. Stand by. Activate the cycle reactor. Good. 1750, 55, 1760. Check microphase. One half MV. Increase three quarters. Stand by. 1767, 68, 69, steady. 1770. Cut the cycle reactor and lock it. Now set the sound wave segregator and patch it into the time machine audio so we can hear what's happening. Yes, sir. All set, sir. Good. Stand by to activate the view screen. Bring up the plate current. 
Increase the gain on the vertical axis. Check image acceleration. It's coming in. There it is. We're right on target. D. Boone killed a bar on this tree June 11, 1770. <laughs> Golly, Daniel Boone never did learn to spell very well, did he? No, but he learned a great many other things, Jet. Look, there he is. 26 years later, one of America's greatest pioneers. Kentucky, plenty of land, plenty of game, a place a man to be proud to call home. No signs of Indians around here yet. I reckon we're safe another night. Good. I'm too darn tired to move. You wouldn't be so tired if there was a pack of Shawnees or Cherokees on your trail. I ain't so sure. You know, Finley, I'll be ever beholden to you for telling me about Kentucky. If you hadn't come through the Adkin Valley when you did, I might still be a sitting there paying high taxes and getting crowded out with a neighbor almost every 20 miles. Score's even, Daniel. Oh, I might have come back by way of the Ohio River again, but I'd never have found my way overland if it hadn't been for you. <laughs> Thank you, Finley. Made a good haul today, Daniel. Wonder how the others are making out. Oh, about the same, I reckon. We better head back to the main camp. Don't want to be split up too long. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you worried? About engines? Why, we haven't seen one on the whole trip. Better to be worried about them before you see them, Finley. Might be too late after. Did you cover our trail leading in here? Oh, there ain't no need for that. There ain't no Indians around here. Besides, I was making me some new traps. Now, I made some buttes, too. I uh, hauled down some saplings, bent them down, rigged them up with vines. Boy, if anything gets caught in those, they're going to be hanging in the air before they know what happened. I figured to have me some more pelts before we go back in the morning. You better cover our trail leading in here, or we might not be around here in the morning. Oh, uh, there ain't no Indian going to follow that trail. You know, Finley, you'd look mighty peculiar with no hair, or, uh, no scalp. <laughs> <laughs> well, I reckon there's no harm in... Gathering a few leaves, Ron. Kentucky. Plenty of elbow room. Plenty of breathing space. Indians are know I'm going to settle out here one day. Even I could cover a trail better than that. There ain't no engines around here. He's too all fired cautious. Panther. Well, <laughs> if he comes around here tonight, he'll find himself swinging in one of my traps. I better watch my step or I'll be swinging in one myself. Getting close to camp. Better be more careful. They're all salted down and ready to pack in the morning. Mm. Hope you covered our trail in here. Come all tuckered out. Let's eat. No fires till after dark. Indians might see the smoke. We ain't seen an engine since we've been in Kentucky. Maybe they don't know we're here. Let's not tell them. <coughs> it sound like a wolf to you? Of course. What else could it be? Ain't so sure. Some Indians are mighty clever at making animal calls. Yeah, and I heard lots of wolves, and that's a wolf. You're just a little skittish about saying the same camp two nights in a row. Maybe, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I want to do some scouting over the next ridge. You want to come? Not me. I'm going to sit right here. Nobody can make me move. All right, I'll be back before dark. Keep your eyes open. Don't worry about me, Dan. <clears throat> I wonder where that jerky deer meat is. Oh.
We ain't seen an engine in a month. I don't know what he's so all fired cautious about. Laboratory. Captain, could you come over to the rocket lab for a minute? We're running a test on your new fuel formula. Okay, Tetro. I'll be right there. Now look, Jeff. You can watch the view screen just as long as you like. But be sure to cut down the power on the time machine when you're through. Yes, sir. Good. Cranny, there are Indians around there. Look at that. He feels safe enough, all right. Cramney. Then they didn't cover the trail to their camp too well, and that Indian found it. Man, he could be a scout for a whole tribe. War paint, too. Tetro! Yes, Jed? Let me talk to the captain. Hurry! He just left me, Jed. He's on his way back there now. Well, get a hold of him and tell him I've materialized myself to Kentucky. Wait a minute, Jed. Wait a minute! There isn't time! I've got to cover a trail! Jeff, Jeff, wait, Jeff, wait, wait! Man, I've just got time to cover the trail before that Indian comes around the bend. Strange white man, cover trail. Him God, him vanish. Transforming from electrical impulses, beginning to materialize. He's coming in, he's in. Jeff! Are you all right? Yeah, I think so. Man, you caught me just in time. Those traps really worked. You certainly found out the hard way. Couldn't you wait until I got back here? But an Indian found the trail into camp. And Finley was sound asleep. There just wasn't time to wait for you. So I materialized myself back and, well, I stepped into Finley's trap. You certainly did. But did you see that Indian? Yeah. I imagine he thought you were some sort of great white spirit when you disappeared. I almost was. Well, next time, wait for me. Yes, sir. But, Captain, what about that Indian? Did he find Finley? I don't know. I was so concerned about you that I forgot all about him. Stand by to activate the view screen. Yes, sir. What kind of an animal was that? Expecting somebody, Finley? Me? No. But I just heard the gall darndest sound I ever heard. Might have been a female panther. They make an awful screech. Ain't heard one around here before, though. Well, I don't know, Dan, but I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I didn't find a sign of Indians around the ridge. I got a notion they're not far off, though. What do you say we get started? Never like to spend two nights in the same place. All right, Dan, anything you say. Let's get packing. <sighs> White God come. White God go. White man must be nearby. Me go warn tribe. White man in Kentucky. Yes, sir. I'm going to have me a million acres for hunting and trapping. What about the engines, Daniel? Finley, I know Kentucky is a hunting ground for the Shawnees and the Cherokees, but it's a gateway to the West. Kentucky's worth fighting for. And if I have to, I'll do some of that fighting. Man, I sure wouldn't want to go exploring in that country. Not many men would, Jeff. But Daniel Boone was a man who could take care of himself in any country. Did he ever get that million acres he dreamed of? No. He spent so much time fighting the Indians off of other people's land that he never found the time to file a proper claim to his own. Out of the millions of acres of land Daniel Boone explored, 
Not one remained his. And he not only explored the entire area of Kentucky, but he also established the boundaries and persuaded the Indians to make a peace treaty. And he built the great wilderness road, which paved the way westward for other people to follow. 